Another year has passed, and we're already in 2021. I had an amazing milestone in 2020, and I'm so proud of myself for finding such great, awesome fellas like you. And I am always grateful of your support, of your love, and all this kindness. That is just insane. And my goal for 2021 is definitely to improve on myself. And honestly, I want to beat myself. I want to outdo my works. I want to learn new stuff. I want to do a lot of things in the new year. And I think you should too. So, what is your goal for the new year? Fasten your seat belts and let's hop right into 2021. What is up my creative fellas, here we are inside of Photoshop and I have chosen this image because this is the image that many of you guys had requested that you wanted to see how I color graded it. So as you can see I've got my color grading folder here. So we're just gonna start over and do everything from scratch. So I'll just delete this color grade folder and let's get going. Number one tip for you guys. Always start your color grid with color lookup tables or lots. And why? Because they are some presets that you can easily apply to your image only by choosing it. You, know, you just go through the list of the color lookup tables and there are many of them and you just select one preset and boom, your image is color graded. It may not be exactly what you want and it may not look good, but still it is a base, it is a starting point for you. So I'll just select a color lookup adjustment layer and I always start my color grading by choosing the very first lot which is called to strip. Depending on how you want your image to look like you can adjust the opacity but if you want your image to look like mine I always drop the opacity down to about 20-30% because I don't want it to look so pinkish. Then after that I will create another color lookup table and let's pause the video over here for the real quick because I want to give you the tip number two and that is stack up your color grading layers as many as you can. Basically what I mean by this is that you should not be afraid of using too many adjustment layers. I mean, in fact, you have to use too many adjustment layers. It is not necessary but if you do so, then it's better because if you just stack up your layers on top of each other one after one and it will all come together at the end and it will make your whole composite come together in a very natural way especially if you use uh, low opacities and try to play with different blend modes so use as many adjustment layers as you can okay moving on let's choose our second color lookup table which is the second one of the list and it's called three strip what this color lookup table does is that it makes the whole image have a warmer tone and it also saturates all of the image so you want to drop the opacity down to about 20 percent for this one as well following the stack up rule for color grading we're going to add another color lookup table and it is going to be the bleach bypass you can see the blown out highlights in the image it does not look good at all so you definitely want to bring down the opacity way too low let me see um i guess 10% will be good for us. The next color lookup that we're gonna be using is called Drop Blues. And as the name suggests, it Drop Blues. Yeah, so. And it also gives the image a little bit of a matte effect. You know, it brightens up the dark areas of the image. We'll also bring the opacity of this one down too. Never use these on the 100% opacity just sucks and we're gonna add another one and it is not the crisp winter the crisp warm yeah it gives so much contrast to the image and I love it but not too much I'll bring down the opacity to about let's say 30% nope 30 is too much let's go with 15 again choosing another color lookup table what we got on the list is got AG Amber and I truly love this one but not on normal blend mode. Let's put it on hue blend mode and it kind of 
gives the image a yellowish tone as you can see but on my skin and my face it looks like trash so you're gonna bring the opacity down to about like 30% 37 something like that and yeah let's go for another color look up here and guess what I'm gonna go back on the list and I'll choose candlelight there's one little secret about this color lookup that you do not know it but I know it and I'm gonna reveal it for you and that is always use this color lookup or lot on multiply blend mode it drastically darkens the image a very nice dramatic effect I'm a big fan of this and honestly I love the effect it gives to the image but still it can be improved and we can do that by double tapping on the side of the layer and going to blend if and I'll just remove the darkness from the bright areas by dragging this slider to the right I hold alt and click on it and it'll separate this and I'll just put it all the way back to the other side and like always bring the opacity down I'll go with 50 on this one cuz I love it moving on to the next one let's create one more color lookup table and I'll choose edgy amber once more but this time I'll put it on soft light blend mode and I'll drop the opacity down to about 25% a nice warm contrast here okay this is getting ridiculous I know but let's drop in one more color lookup fall colors and again this is so repetitive bro I'm not gonna say anything you know what to do what do you think our next color lookup will be well it's this Fuji Eterna if I'm pronouncing the name right and again the opacity must go down and good news my last color lookup will be this uh, Kodak 5205 with the opacity of 20% and that's the end of the color lookup tables we're done with them hopefully and next thing I will do is that I'll create a gradient map on top of them click on this gradient editor and choose legacy gradients uh, by the way if you don't see legacy gradients over here it's just no big deal go to window and choose gradients Right here and click on these three lines and hit legacy gradients then you will be able to see the legacy gradients folder I'm gonna close these tabs alright so I'll select the gradient map and I'll go to the legacy gradients folder in the first folder I always choose the, that purple yellowish kind of gradient and I put it on soft light blend mode and I bring the opacity down to about 20% love how it looks then I will create another gradient map and again I'll go to legacy gradients and this time I will go down to photographic toning and here I will choose this one I love how it looks uh, look at it. it just has the clipped shadows with a brown tone and it just gives it the matte effect I'm gonna put it on self light blend mode and adjust the opacity it'll look awesome just like that all right now I will create a selective color and I'll go to neutrals here I want to add a little bit of cyan to the neutrals of the image uh, honestly there is no rule here you can play out with these sliders to see what looks good because it may differ from image to image and it does so I just add a bit of cyan, a little bit of magenta, some yellow and I'll make them darker by pulling out the blacks. Then I will go to whites and I want to add a bit of yellow to the whites. Not too much, just a tiny bit. And I also add a bit of red. And I head over to blacks. Do not mess around too much with these blacks because it might just destroy your image just a tiny bit of maybe cyan again and a little bit of blue okay here we got our selective color just cool down the tones a little bit here right after that I will create one more selective color and this one is actually for the skin tone so I will actually select the reds and yellows because the skin tone is 
in the range of reds and yellows as you know so I'll just mess around with this because I want to have a richer skin tone so as you can see I added red to the reds magenta I also do the same for yellows I add some red into the yellows and maybe a little bit of magenta and even more yellows into the yellows and I will invert the layer mask by hitting Control I and then I will get the brush and with a low flow and also make sure that it's a soft brush before you start painting and I will just paint on my face because I only want it on my skin tone and you don't have to even worry about painting on the hair and stuff like that because you only targeted the reds and yellows so it will not paint on those areas and as you can see I got a pretty much more saturated skin tone and kind of looks better I think in my opinion and after that I think it's a bit too much so I'll just just the uh, blah 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 I'll just adjust these sliders even more to get the best result there we go bro bro look at this look at that really I guess I have 15 adjustment layers stacking up on top of each other that is the stack up rule that I told you in the beginning and I guess it is enough for this image, so I will hold shift, click on all of them, control G, group them together. Here's the before, here's the after. Pretty much like, wow, look at that. It's a drastic change, isn't it? I just, it, it made myself go wow. And then I will hit control alt shift E to get this clone stamp visible layer. And I want to do the final step going to camera raw filter. This is like the final step of every composite. Inside of camera raw filter, I might want to maybe cool down the image because it is too warm. I always drop the exposure down to bring more details into the image. I up the contrast, I bring the highlights down to reveal details in the highlights, I bring up the shadows to reveal details in the shadows, I bring up the whites to compensate for the highlights, and I bring down the blacks to compensate for the shadows. This is like a fixed rule for me and I don't like increasing the texture because I don't like that grungy look it gives to the image I bring the texture down and instead to compensate for it because I want sharp edges I bring up the clarity there we go and I also like to make my image by the way you can mess around with the dehaze slider I don't mess around with that too much so you can do that if you want I also like my image to be more vibrant but I don't want it to be like oversaturated so I bring down the saturation let me just adjust this and go and we'll go to the curve section and here I just Put a dot here on the shadows then I will grab the blacks and pull it up this will give this image the matte effect or kind of the cinematic look as some guys call it the so-called cinematic mm, so good I'll go to the details tab and I add sharpening you can hold alt to view it in black and white mode to concentrate only on the sharpening by the way, a uh, quick tip, if, if you are sharpening, you can zoom in to see the sharpening process better. Yeah, zoom in 100% onto the image and then sharpen it as much as needed. 25 is good, I guess. But no, let, let's just add a bit more. 35. Alright, let me zoom back. And I also hold ALT, click on the masking to remove that sharpen from the noise of the image. The white areas are the areas that are being sharpened and I only want the edges. So I just increase it to like about 80 and I also 
increase the noise reduction to smooth out the image. Here in the color mixer, I only have reds and yellows to play with. There's actually no colors, so... I will not change anything in here because it already looks cool. I'll not mess around with these so much. I do not do anything in the color grading tab, so I'll skip it. I'll skip the optics, I'll skip the geometry, and I'll open up the effects tab. Here I add a very tiny bit amount of grain and also vignette to where it's needed. Don't forget to increase the highlights and feather it out to make it look natural. And our final tab that we got here is calibration tab. I always drop the blue primary down to give it the orange and teal look. If you've heard of it before, which I think you have. Well, don't exaggerate it, about 20, maybe even less is enough. And I also like to increase the green primary. Add a little bit of like a pinkish tone to the image. And that's it everyone. We did our camera raw filter and our color grading process is finished. You can see the before and after over here. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, consider liking this video and also subscribing for more and better content every week. Till the next episode, peace out.